so far in class, you've calculated statistics where you had a full set of data. However, sometimes we're not going to have that detailed information. If you're dealing with a large population, we're not going to be able to find numbers from each particular person or value. In this case, we're going to do a sample. When you're looking for a sample, there's quite a few different methods that you can use to survey people. In this assignment, we're going to go through different ways of selecting that sample size. So imagine we're looking at the average income of San Antonio. First off, we are starting with a smaller sample. So imagine that the population of San Antonio has been reduced down to 100 households, which represent the overall population. On this map, the colors of the circle indicates the race, the predominant race of that household. Um, and the number tells you over to the side to find the actual income. The larger the circle means the larger income, but to find the exact number, you're going to look at the table. Let's go through some different ways to find a sample. The first one you'll do on your own is just a judgment sample. So imagine that you're picking five homes that you think represent the whole population. You're going to pick those homes, write down the home number, find the income, and calculate the average. Not very scientific, is it? We could also do a simple random sample. What that means is that we're just going to randomly pick a number from the entire population and use that house number. So I have this set up to generate random numbers. My first random number is 31. I'm going to put that in my home number. And I'm going to look at the table to find out that home 31 had an income of $64,000. Let's fill that into the table. You'll notice that when I typed that in, um, it automatically gave me another random number. So now I'm going to use home 87, find that income, and type that in. Continue this process until you have five random numbers and then use that to find the average income. A third method is called a clustered random sample. In this sample, we begin by selecting randomly, but then we simply take the nearby households and use that for the rest of our sample. So when we start, it's going to give us a random number. Um, if we want a new one, we can just type anywhere and it's going to give us a different value. So find your first random number. Um, I updated mine and got a random number of 84. So I'm going to put home number 84 into my chart and find that income. Then what I need to do is I need to find nearby homes. So on your map, find your first random number home. My random number had been 84. So I have house 84 as my first one. And then I'm going to use the nearby values to finish out my chart. So I'm going to use values for home 59, 60, 83, and 54. Your values will be different based on your initial random number. Now let's look at stratified random. In a stratified random, we want to find a person or a value from each of a particular group. So we start by dividing our population into groups based on some characteristic. Um, it might be based on neighborhoods. It might be based on race. Um, in this case, we're going to do a stratified random based on race. So what I've done is I've set up random numbers to give us one household from each of the different um, race groups. It will start with some random numbers for you, or again, you can update them 
by if you just type into your first one, um, it's going to update the different random numbers. Now you'll notice some of these groups are more common than others. So you have a wider range of numbers to set in. Uh, but go ahead and record your values, one from each race. Find the average income. And the last method we're going to talk about is systemic random. In systemic random, we start randomly, but then we add a certain multiple from there. So in this problem, I had 100 households and I want a sample of five. That means I'll need every 20th household. So we're going to look at a random number and start there. Okay, so I'm starting at 27. Then I'm going to add 20 to each to figure out my house numbers. So I want 27, 47, 67, 87, 107. Um, but you'll notice we stop at 100. So that means I'm going to circle back around to the beginning and want house number seven. Record those incomes, again, based on your starting random number. And that would give you your sample size. You'll then use the data you calculated to answer some reflection questions um, based on which sample you think is easiest, what sample you think is most accurate. I look forward to seeing your work. Thanks.